Spirit. no Christmas without you. One more time. It's time. Home again for the holidays. Pain and sorrow miles away in my spirit. is reaching to the sky. Jesus, your Jesus, your You're the reason. Without, without him, hey, Jesus. One more time there. Christmas, Christmas time. Without, without him, Jesus. There is no. Christmas without without him. What's his name? Jesus. Let's say that one more time. There's no Christmas without you. Without you, say Jesus. Say without you, Jesus. Yeah. Without you, yeah. Jesus. Without you. Jesus. Last time without you. So with
You're the reason. Without you, without you, hey, Jesus. One more time, there is no, no Christmas. Without, without you, what's his name? Jesus. There is no. One more time and say there is no Christmas time without without you Jesus. So with our voices. I give thanks to God the Father Almighty for allowing us to be here in worship and for your pastor inviting me. And then I want to introduce the wind beneath my wings, my wife of 52 years. Would you stand, Mrs. F? <laughs> Over in the white hat. We've had a wonderful 52 years with nine children, 18 grands and 16 great grands. My mother said they're cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> We're just excited to be here today and hope that God will speak to us. I'm going to do you like uh, Marilyn Monroe did her husband. I won't keep you long. <laughs> Would you turn to Jeremiah 33, which is 14 through 16. Jeremiah 33, we'll start at verse 16. I'll back up to 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus said the Lord David, shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should be not day or night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon this throne, and with the Levites, the priests, and the ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, 
neither the sand of the sea measure, nor will multiply the seed of David. My servant and the Levites will minister to me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm just excited to be here today. It is a wonderful opportunity for your pastor inviting me to come. And uh, he knows what kind of guy I am. I'm a funny person. I like to make people laugh. You know, and I thought about some things that the world sometimes does some stupid stuff. <laughs> you know, you go to the drugstore, the sick people have to go all the way to the back to get the drugs, and the people buying cigarettes come in the front door at the front. <laughs> Only in this stupid world do you go order cheeseburger, large fries, and then you order Diet Coke. Only in this stupid world do banks leave the vault doors open, but they lock down the pens on the counter. <laughs> this one I like. Only in this stupid world do we leave cars with thousands of dollars in the driveway and we put the trash in the garage. <laughs> My favorite. Only in this world do we buy hot dogs in packages of 10 and buns in packages of 8. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Only in this stupid world do we have a drive-up ATM machine with Braille writing. You ever wonder why? <laughs> I said, do you ever wonder why the, the sun lightens our hair and darkens our skin? And why you never see a psychic win the lottery? <laughs> My favorite is, why is abbreviated such a long word? Now, now, this one is my favorite. Is why are doctors called practicing medicine? <laughs> and this one, why is lemon juice made with artificial flavor and dishwashing liquid is made with real lemons? <laughs> why is the man who invests all your money called a broker? <laughs> <laughs> and why is the time of day when the most traffic, they call it rush hour? Last one, why isn't there mouse-flavored cat food and cat-flavored dog food? <laughs> and my last one is, why didn't Moses squat from two mosquitoes? And then, you know, I, I was watching a program where they sterilized the needle for lethal injection. So things are happening that's stupid in the world. <laughs> my son asked me one time, why don't sheep when it when it rains. And this one is the last one. Why are they called apartments and they all stuck together? And now if you I'll turn to my text. Oh, you, you gotta hear this one though. You gotta hear this one. Why, why why is flying so safe, but they call the airport a terminal? <laughs> that, that whole piece is called Spread the Stupidity. <laughs> I'm just excited to be here today to have an opportunity to, to be in your presence. But there's what I want to talk to you about is longings of the heart. Longings of the heart. Everybody has a longing, right? Y you long for something. And I wanna, there are seven of them, and I hope I'll be able to talk to them shortly. The first one comes from John 15, 9. The longing for the assurance of being enjoyed by God. That's the first longing. The Bible said there are seven longings we have. The first one is the longing of assurance of being enjo in, uh, enjoyed by God. John says, as the Father has loved me, so what? Have I loved you? John 3, 16, a part of that. We were created with a craving to be pursued to be delighted in and enjoyed, first by God and then by loved ones. Understand that God's affection, you know, I wish you turned that off. That, that always happens. Let you know you're still here. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but if you understand that God's affections, for us is where we begin to be exhilarated. He loves us so much. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son. There's a great difference between rebellion and immaturity. And so the longing for the things that Help us grow. 
one of, my, one of the first longings is the longing to be fascinated. One thing I desire of all the days of my life, Psalm says, to behold the beauty of the Lord in the land. Of That's a longing that we have to be fascinated by things that God is doing. There's a craving in our spirit. And sometimes when you just see a rainbow, it, it kind of wasn't supposed to be up there. It wasn't even raining. God can marvel you with this experience of life. The entertainment industry it has a lot of longing and exploits it with profit to the ruin of people. Without having a sense of awe, we live aimlessly in spirit, but we ought to be in awe of something. The third longing is to be beautiful. Why do you think ladies spend so much time under that chair and they're they burning their hair? <laughs> say, say man, man. <laughs> 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 we, we have a longing to be beautiful, right? <laughs> that, that's one of those longings we have. To give, Isaiah 63 said, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joining for mourning. Inside of us, there's something falling on the outside that we have a longing to, to finish and see. Uh, every person longs for this beauty and to feel beautiful. Why y'all spend so much time primping in the mirror? If they destroy mirrors, a, a, a miracle would fall to the ground. Say amen, somebody. The beauty that God possesses is the very beauty he imparts through the redemption of Jesus Christ. One of the great longings is we long to be successful. You don't want to start a business and go broke in two months, do you? I did that once. The great joy that God created is the desire for greatness. Everything we do, we want to be great in it. We don't want to be last. We want to be first. The Bible says he made them a little lower than the angels. and He crowned them with glory and honor. So we cannot lose the longing. We just keep pursuing the longing. Whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Whenever you teach someone something that will help them, Matthew 5, 19, you become great in the kingdom and you have another longing. The longing of intimacy without shame. A lot of time we have intimacy, but the shame comes with it. We long for intimacy. Without, so if you don't have any shame, then you can do whatever you long in Jesus' name. Jesus shares the secrets with his heart, and we can share those secrets with him also. The longing to be wholehearted, that ought to be the first commandment. We long to give all to God, all to Jesus, our what? Oh, he imparts us the power to be passionate, because Jesus was passionate. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. That's passionate. And he passes that on to us that we can have a longing for things that make people better rather than putting people down. We cannot function properly if we don't love people. A purpose and a, a part of our lives is to help somebody pass along and go the way we went. If we don't have something to die for, we don't have a whole lot to live for. I'll say amen, somebody. Amen. The longing for significance, to make a lasting impact. We are desperately to live for meaning, to make a contribution, to make a sign that God has esteemed us. It's not forever, but it's an opportunity. This longing is satisfied by service. If you go to church and don't do nothing in the church, why go to church? That's just my thought. <laughs> this longing is God wants you to be a part of the thing you're, and when you become a part of it, it becomes a part of you. God designed a long list of things that we have different lives for different reasons, but we remember those longings, that they're very important. And things get tough sometimes for the thing you're longing for. I remember when I wanted a motorcycle so bad, my bride went and bought me one, and I couldn't even drive it in the front yard. <laughs> Boy, I wrecked that thing 50 times. <laughs> but but I, she, we satisfied one another's longings. When you have nine children, 18 grand or 16 grand, you're satisfied and longing. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> but Jesus is praying that the Holy Spirit helps us work through our longings. And sometimes longings will give you some pain. Sometimes longings is like putting your foot across the doorstep and then slamming the door on your foot. But God wants you to have a longing that will keep on keeping on. And I want you just to sit and think about some of your longings. Some of the longings that you really thought you had, but they didn't come to peace like you wanted them to come. 
to everything that is, is for a reason. And if God allows you to have something in your heart, don't let nobody talk you out of it. Go, go, go meet your dream. Uh, dreams are kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, our history is quite interesting. I met my wife on February the 2nd. I was in the hurry, so we married on March 15th, 42 days. Love at first bite, I mean first sight. <laughs> <laughs> but the joy was that God was in the midst. I was a, I was a pagan. Okay, She was a Christian, I was a pagan. I could have went to hell in the day. <laughs> but God brings somebody into your life to help you get started. So don't look down, on, look on everybody and lift them up. Because everybody's got a spirit. Everybody's got a hope. Everyone has a longing. Think about what your favorite longing is. Use this for our family. We want our family to do well. Uh, I shouldn't have said that because it brought something to my mind. We lost our son yesterday. Um, and and that, that thing bothered me a long time. But God takes and God gives. And so I know that if you have a longing, God will make a way for you to meet it. So if you just want to be beautiful, be beautiful. Every time you get up, what's that, that thing? Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who's the most beautiful people in this mirror? <laughs> make sure it's positive. <laughs> Don't go with that the whole thing. <laughs> but, but, but God wants you to be beautiful women, and many want you to be handsome as a fox. Every person has a longing. So when you go home, write down seven longings that you have. If you want to be great, let God make you great. If you want to be successful, let God make you successful. Because yeah. God is able. So he hears you. Now, what I like about this text, he says, if you can change the day or the night. Who in the world you know can change the Monday? <laughs> if you can change the day or night, then my covenant can never be changed. And so if you make a covenant with somebody, that's why when people get divorced, I hate to say this, but when they get divorced, they don't remember they made a covenant with God. It don't mean that the covenant is not broken. You cannot break God's covenant. Because he said unless you change the sun, the day or the night, or the sand of the sea or the stars, you cannot break a covenant. So a lot of people are divorced, but they're still not divorced in God's sight because they made a covenant. The covenant is not with you. The covenant is with God. Till death do us what? And three weeks from now, you're parted. You're still in covenant. Therefore, you're living out of your longings. So remember, the covenant is never broken unless you can change Monday and take away Tuesday. Say amen, somebody. And that's power in that scripture. Whoever does and teaches about the kingdom of God, what he wants in your life, he wants us to love one another as I have loved you. Now, how y'all spell love? A G A P E. Agape. That's the kind of love God has. See, when you say, I love you, baby, that means I, you know, y'all know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but God's love is agape. It's the kind of love I don't need anything but what you give me. I don't demand anything from you. I'm a slave to you because I'm in love with you. Jesus was a slave for us. What did he do? Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. I love them so much I give everything I got. That's love, man. Give everything you got. Young people, give everything you got to help your parents respect you and you respect your parents. And that longing for intimacy without shame. Unfortunately, that happens a whole lot with the shame. But God knows all you got to ask, and he will change your name and change your direction and make you wholehearted. The whole earth is full of his glory. So unless you can change the days, keep the covenant. <laughs> when I get some money, I'm leaving him. <laughs> you know how we make excuses. But make the excuses positive. I hope that I can live to pull this one up. And that's what my bride did for me. I was a crook. I'd steal anything that didn't, wasn't knocked down. <laughs> so my wife prayed 
and God changed my mind. Now, I, lo- I lost five jobs. I couldn't keep a job. <laughs> I said, Lord, what you doing to me? He said, I'm training you. <laughs> so I had a strange history. And, and the, but God says he would change. And one day I was on Fort Industrial Boulevard. I worked 11 to 7. And I, from Saint, I worked in three hospitals because for all them children, you got to have three or four jobs. Y'all know that. <laughs> and I'm driving at home in, in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. I fall asleep in my vehicle. For about six months, I'd fall asleep from foot in the door, and I'd wake up in my driveway. Had no idea how I got that in six months. I said, God, something's going wrong. And one day, God says, now I'm going to use you, because I've let you almost kill yourself for six months. <laughs> You're a fool, so I can use fools. <laughs> <laughs> and I went home and told my wife, let's do something. She said, let's go to church. I said, church. And so she took me to church, and almost drugged me when she took me. As I tell people, I was drugged, drugged to church. Every Sunday. <laughs> but out of that, God says, I can use you. So at the age of 45, I went back to school and got a doctor's degree. All A's. And God says, I can use a fool. I know I can use you. Good <laughs> God Almighty. God don't make no mistakes. And he just told me to tell you, be in a covenant with someone. Because the covenant is never, ever broken. Hopefully you have one day a covenant with someone who will be the wind beneath your wings. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. One, one more thought. One more thought came to me. The, the men know about this. Y'all remember them little white, two little white things, square things in your hand that had some numbers on them, and y'all used to? <laughs> what, what did y'all say? Seven and come of what? Oh, I knew y'all did. I knew y'all did. <laughs> you see, we play that game, but God always knows when the seven's going to come up. And so we serve an awesome God. God bless you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to leave this alone, but, but, but when I went out to be a comedian, I wanted to be a comedian, and I went to this club one night, and they all said, come up and serve, and it was all white people in the, in the building, and I walked up and I said, did you all know that Jesus was a black man, and they said, I mean, they, they, they couldn't move for, for five minutes, and I said, why don't you all just applaud yourself, because you can't speak, but I used things like that to jog people's memory. We are so prejudiced. How many integrated churches we got in this community? We go there, they go there. We've got to be open to everybody. Everybody ought to worship together. Because you're not going to have a black heaven, <laughs> a Caucasian heaven, a shiny. We're all going to be in together. If we love one another, that's my challenge to us. Just love. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.